Good evening and welcome to Evening Prayers this Monday the 4th of November. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. My heart teaches me night after night. I have set the Lord always before me. Because you are at my right hand, I shall not fall. My heart therefore is glad and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Our psalm this evening is Psalm 82. God has taken his place in the divine council. In the midst of the gods, he holds judgment. How long will you judge unjustly and show partiality to the wicked? Give justice to the weak and the orphan. Maintain the right of the lowly and the destitute. Rescue the weak and the needy. Deliver them from the hand of the wicked. They have neither knowledge nor understanding. They walk around in darkness. All the foundations of earth are shaken. I say you are gods, children of the Most High, all of you. Nevertheless, you shall die like mortals and fall like any prince. Rise up, O God, judge the earth, for all the nations belong to you. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Our Gospel reading this evening continues in the book of Luke. I must confess I found this quite a difficult reading. I'll share it with you now and you can let me know what you think. Luke 12 verses 49 to 59. Following Jesus may bring you trouble. Jesus continued speaking. I came to bring fire to the world. I wish it were already burning. There is a kind of baptism that I must suffer though. I feel very troubled until it is finished. Do you think I came to give you peace to the world? No, I came to divide the world. From now on, a family of five will be divided, three against two and two against three. A father and son will be divided. The son will turn against his father. The father will turn against his son. A mother and her daughter will be divided. The daughter will turn against her mother. The mother will turn against her daughter. A mother-in-law and her daughter-in-law will be divided. The daughter-in-law will turn against her mother-in-law. The mother-in-law will turn against her daughter-in-law. Then Jesus said to the people, When you see clouds growing bigger in the west, you say, A rainstorm is coming. As soon as it begins to rain. When you feel the wind begin to blow from the south, you say, It will be a hot day. And you are right, you hypocrites. You can understand the weather. Why don't you understand what is happening now? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hmm. So, I read, I read some, some, um, some things that would help me to understand this reading and I came up with a couple of things that really did help me, really did help me to understand what this meant. The first thing that I read was about the clouds. I don't know about you but one of the things that I love doing at the Ark on a beautiful day when the sky is blue but there are lovely clouds is I love to go out into the Ark garden and lie on the floor with the children and look up and see the clouds and I've just looked up 
here and seen a big spider. That's not good, but I'm going to remain brave. Oh my goodness, it's huge. So I'm looking up at the clouds and I say to the children, what can you see? I'm able to make visions, make pictures, see people or vehicles or other things in the clouds. And I just love doing that. It really gives me a sense of creativity in those clouds. And of course, weather, weather people, meteorologists, I think they're called, use the clouds, look at the clouds to determine what the weather is going to be like. And they may well look ahead as they do to forecast what the weather is going to be like. But of course, this scripture clearly says, when you see clouds growing bigger in the West, you say a rainstorm is coming. Well, forecasters are, are able to to forecast that. When you feel the wind begin to blow from the south, you say it will be a hot day. And again, forecasters will be able to, to tell us that, whether they get it right or wrong is another question. But then Jesus goes on to say, you hypocrites, you can understand the weather. Why don't you understand what is happening now? And what is happening now? is simply that. What is happening now is what matters. Tomorrow is important, but today is far more important. We must live life for Jesus today. We must not be hypocritical look to the future and what if, what if, what if, but look at today and decide what we are going to do, how we are going to live and how we are going to be disciples of Jesus. I looked up a sermon today and it was, it was really interesting. I'm just going to see if I can pull it up now so that I can share it with you. So it was from this exact reading and it spoke about a man um, who told, who was part of this sermon, but then who said that he spoke about the fifth gospel. His name was Juan Carlos Otrix, some, something like that, something like that, just um looking to see if I can find it, it's here. Is this? Ooh. Yeah, this is the one. So it says, I came to throw fire on earth. I wish it were already kindled. Fire, division, families set against one another. And then it says, was Jesus having a bad day? Well, we might think that, but actually no. He was just being completely honest. He knew what was gonna happen in the future, but he wanted us, he wanted his people then and us now to live for the day. Not in peace, but in division. That doesn't always really sit well, but actually it's, it's a really, really good lesson to live for today, to hear not just what we want to hear, but to hear what God is saying to us to act on it and then to do what is right, to share the good news, to show others what it is to be a Christian, to be a disciple, to be a follower of Jesus. So let's take our lives 
and let's live them for today. And let's also know that, that guy who spoke about the, the fifth gospel was saying that some of the things that we read in our gospels are wonderful. They give us such hope, such great advice. But there are the really difficult bits as well, of which this reading was definitely one for me today. But we don't often underline those in our Bible. We underline the good bits. God so loved the world, love one another as I have loved you. All the nice things that we want from our faith. But actually, sometimes it's really important to look at the difficult things too. And this guy, Juan Carlos Oritz, was a preacher in America. And he wrote lots and lots of blogs and lots of books. And he has some really, really good things to say. And he called it the fifth gospel. That sometimes we read the four gospels, but we only pick and choose the bits that matter to us. But actually, let's all read the fifth. Let's all read that Luke reading, Luke 12, 46 to 59 or 49 to 59. It's a tough one, but let's read it knowing that today matters. Let's live in the presence for him. Let's do everything we can to show his glory and his good news to all those around us. Amen. I picked a hymn tonight by, um, well, sung by the First Plymouth uh, Church in Lincoln, Nebraska. I've not played one of those for a long time, but this is lovely and it's called O God of Every Nation.
pretty sure you can sense my fear. I really appreciate that Janet has said, God is that spider, Alison. And Maureen has said, understand the difficulty. The spider belongs to the great creatures and indeed it does. And indeed it is huge and it hasn't moved yet. But do forgive me for keep looking at it. I am terrified of spiders, but they are part of God's creation, making me think back to that reading that we've just shared that I was a bit like this with because I was really drawn to the spider. don't know if any of you have ever seen the film Pollyanna with um, Hayley Mills starring as that little girl. And she talks about the glad texts. And of course, tonight we're talking about that fifth gospel where... <laughs> Thank you, Irene, it won't eat me, you're right. Um, where the fifth gospel is perhaps the, the not such glad texts. And I'm thinking that even Pollyanna would have been really glad about a spider. She'd have felt something really good and positive about it. I just don't like them. But anyway, we are here to worship God. And even the spider is listening to the word of God. Amen. Let us pray. Abide with us, Lord, for it is toward evening and the day is almost over. In your mercy and grace, abide with your whole church. In your holy word and sacrament, abide with us and with all your faithful people, until the day star rises, and with the morning light we rejoice in the glory of Christ. Amen. Gathered in the peace of Christ, let us offer our needs to God. Let us pray for the unity of all Christians, that we may be reunited in the love of Christ. Loving Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all nations that the liberty of the gospel may be the foundation of every government. Loving Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for our own congregations that our lives may be rooted in the love of Christ. Loving Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all those who are imprisoned by the chains of suffering that God will set them free. Loving Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for those who have died, that they may rest in peace. Loving Lord, hear our prayer. All wise God, your compassion and care have nourished us this day and have led us to this night's beginning. Keep the light of your hope burning brightly in your people. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And so we come to our cycle of prayer for this East Midlands Synod. And this evening, as always, we pray in particular for the ministers, elders and members of our churches in Derbyshire. And now we come to the names of those who have asked us for prayer. We begin with um, a prayer that I asked for, for my dad, the Reverend Brian Russell, because of his declining health. But I have wonderful news to share with you this evening about my dad, who last Monday, just a week ago, was in real declining health. And today, for the first time in 11 months, he has sat in a wheelchair and he has gone to a cafe to have breakfast with my mum to speak to people in the real world. It is such a wonderful day for my mum and my dad, and I thank you dearly for prayers for them. We continue also to pray with David Gretrix for his daughter Ruth, and for Hilary Senton, secretary of our former Burton Joyce URC and her family, after Hilary has taken ill. We pray with the Reverend Jay Phelps for Sue Phelps, with the Reverend Gillian and Alice Poucher for Neil. 
We pray for the Reverend Patrick Lidget and for Helen and the family in their care and concern for him. We pray for Elaine Dre, secretary of our former Ermin URC and her pain and anxiety as she awaits surgery. We pray with Geoffrey for Deacon Emily Ho Crook, recovering after a stay in hospital. We pray for Graham Garleb for his continued recovery after surgery, for Roger Allen and the Reverend Ruth Allen in her care and concern for him. For Barbara Turner of Holly Moorside URC, for the Reverend Helen Wakefield Carr in her ongoing cancer treatment, for the Reverend Hamish Temple for recovery from surgery, for the Reverend for Jean Schenk and for the Reverend Brian Schenk in his care and concern for her, for the Reverend Graham and Vera Maskery, and with Moynia and Stella for Father Andy. We pray with Ankatea for Kelly in his journey to recovery and for Laverne in her care and concern for him. We pray with Teddy for his group home friend, Jerry. We pray with the Reverend Claire and the Reverend Brian Davison for Susie, their daughter. And we pray for Cheryl and for Prince and the family in their ongoing care of her. We pray with Andy for Mike, his dad, and for Liz and Ruth in their ongoing care of him. And we pray for John and for Irene as she continues to look after him. We pray for Margaret Davis, secretary of our former URC Rose Hill, who is very poorly. And for Andy, a husband to Caroline and father of three girls who is undergoing treatment for cancer. We pray also for those who grieve, especially for Scott, Jan, Gail and Dawn and the whole family as they grieve for their mum, Margaret Walkinshaw. We pray for Susan Hunt and all who grieve for her husband, Peter. We pray for those who grieve for the Reverend Jim Gould, especially for Cathy. And we pray for those who grieve for Don Buxton, especially for the Reverend Maureen Buxton. And this night we pray for this world. We pray for the places that are torn apart by war. We pray for the places that are torn apart by natural disasters especially thinking of the flooding and the loss of lives. We pray tonight for our friend Tom and many friends that we have that live in the US. The votes are being counted as we speak, but it could be days before a decision is made on who will be the next president. And for many people, that is going to be a really tough wait. We pray, Lord, that you have your hand on that situation and that you will bring the right person to lead that country, to be an ally to the countries that it already is friends with. And we pray for all those who are hoping one way or the other that their party will win. We pray that it will be God's party that wins. And we pray for this country as we have found a new leader now for the opposition. And we pray now that this country can think about its people instead of its power. Think about the people instead of themselves and think about the good of the people and the country and not the good of the people at the top. Father God, we offer all of these prayers to you this night. We ask you to hold your world in the palm of your hand and in your time, when you are ready, bring peace.
among all. Amen. And now let's say together the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. To close this evening, a beautiful hymn, Abide With Me. You know, sometimes you feel very foolish for being so scared of one of God's creatures. Paul has indeed been with a glass and got the spider and put it in the garden, safe back in its own kingdom rather than in mine. Bless you all for your kindness and for bearing with me this evening. The Lord bless us with his grace and fill us with his peace. Amen and good night.